Attention, passengers. This is your co-pilot speaking. Your pilot is black minded so you are not going blind and there is no power failure. You are merely experiencing the immense blackness of his proximity, and when you hear his voice, you and the cabin will get even darker than you are currently. We will be cruising at the speed equal to light, because the one other thing that travels equally fast is darkness. Your loved ones awaiting your arrival may not recognize you at first sight. This is normal. Simply tell them about the pilot, and they will understand. We will taxi to the runway now, so please buckle up and prepare for a high-speed departure. Thank you for choosing Jet Black Airways, where the phrase Jet Black is also a verb. We hope you keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Justice forever. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Some of you in peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. First, let me give shouts out to uh, Vaughn, um, to uh, Red Lion ESV. Salam alaikum, brother, for coming through on that cash app and for hitting the share button. And to uh, S. Jacques for coming through on the cash app. Uh, I also want to give shouts out to uh, Senor Kanga. I'm still catching up on the emails. My God. I don't think I'm going to finish catching up, actually. Uh, but bit by bit. Um and also to anonymous anonymous for the emails i know right and a matter of fact i thought about your last email and i figured i probably better ask you this uh, i mean i better answer you about answer your questions now when i can um if, as far as your question about gulf arabs goes um they don't i don't hear about them getting arrested in mass in morocco because they would stop going if they did um but um, it's still known why they're there. Another thing is that um, I don't think if there's any, I don't think there's any documentary um, that you'd be able to find on that side of Morocco. As far as the percentage of non-Muslim goes, I read that there are about 3,000 um, of the Jewish faith living in the capital city. I don't know about the rest of the country, I'm not sure how many Christian citizens there are. Atheist, you know what, man?
2020 and 2021, she was um, on the outs of the golden sphere for a bit. And something happened. In the spring of 2021, she reconciled with the very women with whom she had a grudge, and even the man with whom she had a grudge. Some of you have heard me mention the golden sphere before in prior videos. This was a sphere that formed, um, filled with mixed and light-skinned people, MLS. And that's what the term meant. I coined uh, the uh, acronym. Mixed and light-skinned people, they got tired of being offensive to the black communities in their regions or cities, and also being offended by those who hated them. And they got offended by the notion that it's okay to um, dump on light-skinned folk and that we were supposed to just tolerate it or take it. And they said they did not want to offend the innocent and they weren't willing to tolerate any more offense as well. And they weren't willing to beef and grudge with uh, their cousins and relatives that were not mixed or didn't appear such. Um, and the best way to go about it was to have their own space online and offline. Now, I do understand that black populations of more than one nationality are divided based on appearance and the admixture of the lack thereof. But in the USA, I support the right of MLS people to refuse to be stereotyped negatively uh, because we're not 100 percent black, just as I support the right of the unmixed or relatively unmixed black population to not be negatively stereotyped. Well, here's what I came to understand early on. The MLS women and the MLS men had different stories altogether. The MLS women had stories of being favored by men and fought by women. The MLS men had stories of being treated all kinds of ways by men, peacefully and hostilely and neutrally, but being either ignored or ill-treated by women of any percentage of black blood at all. The men, sorry, hold on. All right, so we men spoke of being hyper-scrutinized and negatively stereotyped and suspected of being 9-A-Y or even into children of other species and even struck. I don't mean color struck. I mean getting physically hit by women. And we, some of us came to realize that we were being hit by women that never hit darker men. We noticed that darker skinned women didn't treat us worse unless they were highly sought after by many men, but the light skinned women would treat us badly and unconditionally unless they generally ignored us or friend zoned us. But the friend zone had to come with some sort of diminutization, some sort of putting us in our place or getting us told. So what sisters do to bras in general in the West right now, lighter skinned women did to us on steroids years ago. And along with sisters of other shades that had enough attention from enough other men as well. See, we weren't supposed to date outside of our race either. That was double treachery if we did it, even more than if a brother looking like Michael Jordan did such. Carl Williams and I try to tell this to the Golden Sphere because the women in the Golden Sphere went right to talking about how if there was a need for a physical community, then we men had to build it. Okay. We then said we couldn't build it for other men to inhabit and we weren't sought after to father the next generation either, especially by women who resembled us. They wanted us the least, as I said. They were not playing around. So, um, to make a long story short, things continued on, discussions continued on. Um, it degenerated over time. When I came in um, to it, I probably was a latecomer. But in any case, I came into this discussion about the need to leave the dysfunctional 
in 19 communita, just like the black manosphere's discussion until this day. Now, I pointed out that the relationships between the genders had to be fair or this wasn't going to work and we would have the same issue. Carl Williams and I were invited to tell men's side of the story. Hat tip to Carl Williams. That host that invited us was Exoticals United, known as EU. She had us on her channel. Now, I admit I talked too much, but it wasn't to over talk her. I did so accidentally because I had a lot of catching up to do and I wanted to be fair to a nuanced question. So I meant no harm in my long winded explanations. These women went in on call because he admitted with regret to cheating on someone in the past. And they missed the part where she did this to him first and he retaliated. See, we already know that when you deal with Western women, they are likely to cheat. And if, Well, you know, if you don't cheat back, they don't respect you. And if you do cheat back, they don't respect you because really they can't respect you at all. It's just a question of what reason they're going to have for not doing it. Carl Williams at that time didn't know all of this. Now, he knew that she cheated and he knew she deserved no fidelity from him either. And that she's really going to disrespect him if he doesn't cheat back. So knowing what he knew at the time, he cheated back. He regretted it. Years later, he was called on this panel But before he could fully communicate the regret, you can guess how it worked up. He was opening up to these women, to EU and the women in the audience about the type of treatment that we could expect if we made ourselves available to women that grew up in the black communities, especially the women that looked like us. They were the least interested. Oh, yeah, we get cheated on even more. And these women who cheat on us do less to hide it because they're already brainwashed to crap test us more, to test the manhood more. So they're more likely to even admit to cheating when they didn't do so because they think they need to see our manhood more and test it because they're already primed not to respect us or to respect us less and then to lose respect for us soon. They doubt they even should respect us. So the way they view black men in general these days was multiplied when it came to how they viewed us MLS men and still is. Carl witnessed this and he ain't no softy. Now, you take a Morehouse guy like me, the son of a doctor, and you can imagine what kind of disrespect I can expect. Well, Carl was, in a sense, ambushed by EU, and he later forgave her for that, too. I later realized that there was a lot of pain in the golden sphere in general, as men and women alike melted down on camera on live streams and verbally attacked each other. It got so ugly, I had to leave it because I couldn't help anyone. But I had to sit there and watch people every time I tried to. Watch them turn on each other and melt down like the end of the movie Juice and pieces of themselves laying close to the edge because they didn't know the ledge. Shouts out to Rakim. It got nasty. So before I had to leave it all together, a woman named Bossy Empress TV was shunned by the other women because she hates men so much that even they got offended. They may have had low boiling content, but believe me, Bossy believes men are undeserving and just inferior as hell. She has a type of hatred. She told me herself that men deserve to have to get out there and kill each other to get whatever women want us to have. She said it's our job to fight each other to the death over these things. She said that getting a legacy, these are things she told me. She said getting a legacy out of a woman should cost us our health and lives just because we want legacies. So if there's anything from a woman we want, it should cost us our lives and health to get it. She also said that men don't deserve even exchanges from women. No fair exchanges. And if she doesn't count it as a warlike attitude that she has, because we're not important enough to her for her to see it as war. Now, she said this to me. She had an OnlyFans account about which I didn't know at the time. That site's blocked here. And the women that broke away from her, who themselves didn't think much of men, good or bad, but still didn't think we deserve much, no matter what we build, said that she was living in a motel and charging men to spank them. Now, that's what they said. Here's the thing. EU in the split went with Bossy, but kept trying to get back into the good graces of Carl and the other two women that were appalled by her friend Bossy. See, Bossy was open with the hostility. EU had more of a subtle contempt of men and was content to let Bossy say the mean and the benutizing trash. She would sit and play demure at the same time. 
She told stories that showed she was used to getting attention from men and that men fell in love with her a lot if the stories were true. Now, later on, I learned from a man in the Golden Sphere who studied feminism and misandry that either she sympathizes with and is influenced by a group called anti-natalist or that she is an anti-natalist. They're generally pretty extreme. They usually have this anti-birth view because of their view of men. Cynthia G. actually got uh, anti-natalist views about aborting black male babies. Um, but she specified and targeted black male babies. The anti-natalists actually aim more so for contraception in general than Plan B, than abortion as a backup, regardless of the race or gender of the baby, but pretty much definitely so for male babies. They actually have it in for women like Cynthia G for blowing up their spot because they want to operate and spread under the radar. And you didn't say the same things as Bossy out loud, but she was fine with Bossy and the other women of the Golden Sphere saw this and shunned her at first. Now, she has since reconciled with them, and I don't know what changes she has made to her platform since the spring of 2021. I do know that the Golden Sphere was a mess and is still divided and has made no progress. It's not good for men of any percentage of black blood or any complexion. And that the women in it either only want unmixed brothers but want MLS men to build their new communities, or they only want Wyatt men but want MLS men to build their communities. Now, either way, it's just as bad. They tell MLS men they value us, but in their personal lives, they generally don't. And it's up to them. But they don't shed the attitude of the black gynocracy from which they want to depart the same way that the black manosphere does. <laughs> they want to, to kind of depart from it, kind of, but not because of its injustice to men and boys of any complexion. They simply are tired of having to fight other girls in childhood and in adulthood in the current gynocracy. They aren't tired of the violence against MLS boys and sometimes adult men. They're tired of the violence and social distrust by black women against them. EU was like that when I stopped trying to contribute to the golden sphere. I say trying because my efforts didn't help. They went nowhere. The gender war made its way into the golden sphere despite my efforts. Whatever changes the U has made to a platform since then, I'm unaware. I know that at the time, EU set up Carl Williams and decided to point name questions at him instead of merely ask him, and this was not their agreement. I honestly am so accustomed to this from women that I didn't detect it, but Carl did, and I trust his judgment when he's sober. Honestly, the stress had him and some others going live while not being sober, but mostly just to the point of being sleepy, still not at their sharpest. Many of them were stressed, and they were stressing each other. This is both men and women, though. So back to the issue at hand, I don't know when EU recorded and uploaded the video to which Dr. Thunder replied. So as I state again, I, I don't know what changes she's made to a platform since then. I'm open to be updated. But I do know that EU did not define or show by proper example what cognitive dissonance even is in that particular upload, no matter how recent it is. No matter how much time has passed between when I stopped checking in on the Golden Sphere and when she uploaded that to which Dr. Thunder rightly replied. Hats off to Dr. Thunder, too. She has no business talking about incels either. She practiced abstinence as a Christian from what she said though she isn't Christian anymore, by what she said, by her own admission. Now, practicing abstinence is fine for reasons of chastity if you prioritize marriage as well, but I never heard her prioritize marriage. She was married, but she and he split sometime, I think, in 2021. And guess who was nice enough to help her move, by the way? It was Carl Williams. The one she wanted to characterize by ambush as a cheater, still just months before, was the one who helped him move later on a few months later. When Rashida Strober went on a live stream, you came on and just trolled and gaslit him. And the thing is, Rashida wasn't trying to start anything at first. See, by AU's own admission, she started her account as a troll account and she deteriorated 
that day to just trolling Rashida. Now, Rashida may need to calm down some, but look, Rashida was not the aggressor from the parts that I heard. Everything I was able to hear on that stream was not her being the aggressor. And Rashida does not right off the bat take every light-skinned woman as an enemy. The thing is, it was EU that insisted on not taking the discussion to its proper intellectual level. EU sympathizes with pretty girls to this day, but the issue is in the terminology she chooses, which is pretty girls and pretty girls table. That's some middle school vocabulary if we're really paying attention. So while complaining about how other women too old for this crap still behave in their adult years, she diminutizes men who the most attractive women will normally overlook as a result of what the women are doing. That's some adolescent vanity disguised as advanced adult vocabulary. It's just a nasty teenage bitches, shallow social pessimism. And I'm not even calling you the nasty teenage bitch, but if you take any nasty teenage bitches, shallow social pessimism, based on the most negative assumptions of everyone around except the best-looking women. Then what EU does is take that and then coats it to sound and look like an adult mental health expert's really astute and in-depth analysis. That's all the cuss word it is. And this is from a woman in the golden sphere who doesn't call herself black, but who took all of the negative assumptions that a Western black hyena would make and then applies them to all women who don't qualify to sit at her so-called pretty girl's table. EU isn't growing up mentally if this is her orientation still. Now, to her credit, EU does state that she does not consider dark-skinned women to be ugly. She's actually sick and tired of the way they seem to think that they're ugly when they're not. That's about as mature as I've heard it be. But despite the immaturity, she somehow was able to get married. And it isn't because she's MLS. It's because she's in the USA. We Western men haven't required this enough in my generation and the generation before us. The boomers and their kids, us Generation X guys, just let women be immature and childish well into adulthood. And it shows in the likes of her. She is calling, as Dr. Thunder showed us, a Christian man teaching a Bible study to be an incel. Why the hell, matter of fact, you know what, who the hell is EU to call any man an incel as an epithet, as an insult? If she was absent outside of marriage, that's fine. But was she helping any man to get married? No, believe me, she won't help a man get married for his own benefit or to not be an incel. She might hook a man up with a gold digger or a single mom, sure, because that's not what's best for him. But there's no way she'll try to link a man with who will benefit him truly and equitably. Most women in the West wouldn't. So that really doesn't make her especially vicious. But that includes women who don't hate us or want to harm us, at least not consciously. EU is still, like other women in the Golden Sphere, brainwashed to look down on normal men at best and to hate us at worst. I don't know exactly where on that spectrum she falls. I suspect, but I would not assert or outright accuse. But I suspect that she cannot love a man truly. And that could be a reason she needs therapy herself and needs to hear some professional throw these terms at her. Instead, she's throwing them at us. If she can love a man, I would stand corrected, but I would not expect to know about that diagnosis anyway. But she was with some of the other women and even some men of the golden sphere and saying that we men needed to build. That's the problem. Build what? Mixander? Okay, why? So that you can bring in men that didn't have to build it to live with you and lay up with you? Are you insane? We are dealing with that same dysfunction in the gynocracy that sometimes you said would try to beat your ass because you're light skinned and on top of that cute. It's worth it to build if we get to run up in our wives' genitals and siren, raise our own kids with them. But if we're not whom you want, you can't ask us to pay the husband price tag for your preferences to be the one nightstands. She was asking for that. She also didn't call out the other women for their clear 
preferences for other guys while calling for us to do the building. See, the preferences were not a reason for her to call them out. But the preferences for others while calling for us to do the building is a reason to call them out. You see, just like the black hynocracy is sitting up and saying that you non-thugs, we non-thugs need to do the building and the dishwashing, you know, raising other men's kids. They were kind of saying to us MLS guys that we needed to do that too. They were saying it a bit more indirectly, but they were saying as much. Granted, she was already married before she knew of a golden sphere to a non-black, non-black admixed man. So that's fine. But why say that men should build, but that other women don't need to bring anything to the table for the men who build? Why ask two MLS guys to come on to her channel to explain what we had learned from unmixed and MLS women alike, just to try to hold Carl out as if he was still a cheater at the time of his appearance as a guest because he wouldn't let someone cheat on him and get away with it. There have been other things that other women have done and said, not necessarily EU, and I mean in the golden sphere. So I'm not trying to blame her for what others have done, except for what she approved. What I will point out is that at the time I stopped checking up on the Golden Sphere, she was not distancing herself from any of them except from Bossy more so because she wanted back in with Carl and two other ladies that were more central to the Golden Sphere's audience as time progressed. <sighs> Don't take my word for it. I can say that Hybrid, the sheriff, shout out to him, has more receipts than I do. And he could update me and you on where I'm wrong or just ignorant since 2021. He was ill-treated by the women of the Golden Sphere. And the woman that validated him was maligned for that, and she later turned out to be a sadistic, vicious tease herself. But the other women didn't know this when they maligned her for liking hybrid. If they had known this, they probably would have given her a hat tip too. She blamed hybrid for things they said to her, and I know what that is like. You see, Carl Williams will also know what that is like because we MLS dudes have actually been accustomed to getting blamed a lot since the 1990s before they started blaming us black men categorically for things that others did to them. And we're not the only ones. Brothers with glasses. Brothers that learn other languages have also been blamed for things that they didn't do. Now it's just done across the board. You take a picture with your daughter and then you were demonized as if you were harming that baby. Years ago, my mother told me not to hug my daughter out in public. My daughter. And I didn't understand why it was that bad. And then one day, this brother, this father took a photograph with his minor daughter. And his picture was posted up and shared by some broad that set up and said he looked like he was dangerous to kids. Get that baby away from him, his own daughter. And one of the men of the black manosphere said, I know this man. He's completely normal. This is going too far. Dr. Tia San Johnson actually talked about that photograph at some point. But before it was most brothers, it was a few of us. And MLS brothers in the 90s were beginning to get this. Don't ask me how I know that either. In any case, in this upload by EU, I heard the, the one to which Dr. Thunder responded. I heard the same immature tendency to blame men for what some women do or say and to diminutize us men while seeking reconciliation or distance from the women who might not tolerate the vanity. In the end, the golden sphere became a lighter complexion online version of the black hyenocracy that they and we in the black manosphere both wanted to leave. And EU, along with a few others, helped it become such and at other times let others do that work for them. (laughs) 
when I say helped it, I mean they helped the golden sphere to become the same gynocracy. And other times they just let some others do it. Here's what happened in the end. The new golden sphere gynocracy got surpassed by passport bros and SYSBM in leaving the gynocracy. Passport bros and SYSBM have increasingly caught flights. My son finished his first international trip for nine weeks, two countries. He is now back in the States, engaged. That's just one example. The Golden Sphere got surpassed and the gynocrats, the new gynocrats of the Golden Sphere, failed to nab the professional brothers that acquired skills and passports before the great rush to the airports. And as this mess continued, I sat up and I watched Kevin Samuels take the talking points of the black manosphere with which he used to disagree and make them mainstream and do more for the growth of the black manosphere, be it passport bros, SYSBM, passport gang, IBMOR, or any other form of BMPT, or just black manosphere in general, do more for its growth than we, um, not than what we deserve, but than what he did more for it than we had been able to because he went mainstream and did it in such an organized way. Leading to the great rush to the airports. Well, I would now call it the rush. And it seems to be doing nothing but increasing and it's going to become the great rush to the airports. Everybody's heard of Passport Bros. Two of my former students last semester told me the term Passport Bros because they didn't know that I knew. And if the black Saudi women start acting up, black Saudi men are going to be joining us and the Somalis. When the last black passport bro or SYSB man has landed at the last destination and cleared passport control and baggage claim, the gynocrats of the golden sphere, along with you, will still be yapping about how MLS men were sassy and zesty for wanting to be treated equitably, respected and loved as much as we were being demanded to do the same in kind. And for demanding that we not be blamed and diminutized for what women were doing and saying to each other. And those MLS men, like me, will be abroad with the rest of us brothers, eating in restaurants in Pattaya or Phuket, Manila or Mombasa, joking with each other and with our Blasian sons about the wild time surviving the matrix that succeeded in pitting MLS women and unmixed sisters against each other to agree on only trying to take from us without giving anything in exchange. What good will it be to sit at the pretty girl's table then? See, these tables are owned by the schools anyway, and the lunchroom is getting less and less crowded as you speak. And one day you will be joking about someone you saw across the room who could never sit at the pretty girl's table. And you will look up from your laughter and you won't know anyone in the lunchroom. And the guys will rightly be looking at you, finding you too old. How was that for being dusty and incel, EU? You didn't want to leave the gynocracy altogether and starve it out. You simply wanted another gynocracy in which you would not be challenged for your appearance. That destiny for which you derided women of the old gynocracy awaits you for insisting on simply starting another. And gynocracies don't last. The next time you are about to fall asleep, you and others like you, take note of the silence in which you normally lose consciousness. It will soon follow you throughout your days after you have awakened and left your doors, you and the rest of the pretty girls' table, not because you're pretty, but because you remained girls and never became women. 
Get used to that silence. BMPTs, get used to the sounds of each other's funny stories and laughter. I hope that this helps. As always, black heart, black mind, black out, aslam alaikum and black, heterosexual, non-select male power because they don't like it, and black patriarchy until extinction of Judgment Day. Thank you again for flying with us here on Jet Black Airways, where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. When the plane docks at the gate, I ask that you hit that link and get some merchandise. And if there's anything left over, then go ahead and punch the cash app button and only punch in numbers that will be easy for you. Gender justice forever.